Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am Nick from Australia. Welcome to the Rugby League Breakdown Podcast, episode number 58. Bugger me. Getting close with episode 60. Looking forward to that. As always, in the middle, in the Manly Seagulls jersey, it's Pro Enzo Vids. On the end, with the headphones, it is all out champ. And with the microphone in my hand, it's Nick from Australia. Guys, welcome to the show as always. Um, fellas. Proenzo, all that champer. How are you, boys? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Looking forward to the show. Sounds good, oh, champer, mate. mate. How I'm, you going, mate? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And, guys, trust me, this is an episode you do not want to miss. This could be our biggest episode yet. We this are could going be. to have plenty of disagreements tonight. We might even start yelling and abusing each other. It might get <laughs> to that. I think it will on a certain topic. I really do. Well, what are the odds for a huge argument, Nick? What are the odds? Uh, probably about a dollar ten at the moment. <laughs> it's gonna happen, guys. It's pretty much guaranteed to happen. I'm a Cowboys fan. You're a Tigers fan. Of course, it's gonna happen. <laughs> um, I, I, I just gotta say that if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you go ahead and like the live stream, subscribe to the channel as well. It means a lot, and share share the podcast around to your friends. How many other? Regular YouTubers are doing live podcasts like us. Oh, I'll answer that. Nobody. So everybody, exactly. like, share, subscribe, do all that good shit. Promote the hell out of it. And um, let's try and get a big crowd for tonight's show. And this is going to be a great podcast. But boys, I just got to ask you one thing. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, I was born ready. No, 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 no. I said, are you ready? Yes, I am. I am ready. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to get straight into it. We're going to dive straight into the podcast. And we're going to start off with a bang. It's going to get hated real quick in here. Topic number five. Straight off the bat. Because it's all everyone's talking about. Were the West Tigers robbed against the Cowboys on Sunday? It happened the other day. Tigers, Cowboys up there in Townsville. The Tigers fought no one. Short kickoff happens. <laughs> Kyle Fell milks it. Gets the penalty. Holmes kicks the goal to win the game on, on his birthday as well under enormous pressure. Kicks it, wins it. Cowboys win. NRL social media absolutely exploded like I've never seen anything like it before. I haven't seen social media get so pissed off after a game since the 2019 grand final between the Roosters and the Raiders. People were fucking pissed. Everyone was losing their shit. Um, I want to get Pro Enzo Vid's view on it first. I want to get a neutral um, view on this before me and Champa kill each other here. Pro Enzo Vids, you're a manly supporter. You probably don't give a damn about the Cowboys or the Tigers one bit. Um... Mm. What were your thoughts on the situation? Did Kyle Felt get ta uh, taken out off the ball? Was um, Kyle Felt milking it for a penalty? Was the correct was the, the decision right? I want your take on it, Pro Enzo Vids. Yeah, look, I, I think it was a wrong call. I don't think the Tigers, um, you know, I, I don't think Cowboys should have won it at the end of the day. I think Tigers were the better side and. Just that unfortunate that things like that occur right when the game end. Um, and I, I think uh, look at some images and, and the replay, both Asu Kepa'oa and uh, Felt were both looking at the ball. So you can't say that anyone was, was escorted off the ball there. So I do think, you know, Cowboys were lucky at the end. And I do feel sorry for Tigers and obviously you yourself, Champa. But, you know, there's not much you can really do now, I suppose. So that's the end of it, really. But I think Tigers were wrong, yeah. Okay. All right. I understand your point of view and I respect your opinion. Now, all out champer, I know you're pretty pissed off about it and I understand why you're upset. I know the feeling of having a controversial call go against you, but um, hang on, time out. Before I even get your opinion on it, I just need to go to the live chat. We've just received a $20 Super chat. Bugger me. Oh, my boy, Mr. Mr. Lachlan. <laughs> Mr. Lachlan. This $20 goes wally and solely to Lachlan All Out Champa. Because your name is Lachlan. I've got a lot of respect for you. 
And here's $20 as a gift. Sorry, Nick. And Provenzo Vids. I would have donated to you if your name was Rockland. Well, Rockland, uh, thank you for donating to the channel, my good friend. And I'm sure uh, Mr. All Out Champa uh, appreciates it. I'm sure he appreciates it. Uh, um, but, buddy. Well, we. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you, okay. uh, Mr. Mr. Lock Lock Mr. Lachlan, thank you. Thank you so much. But please, you know, when you donate to this channel, all right, these donations go to Nick, all right? My donations are on my channel separately, but I do appreciate it. Um, Thanks a lot. But just, I, I appreciate appreciate the donation and the consideration, Mr. Lachlan. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Lachlan, for but, being But guys, guys, just I just want to add real quick, if if you want to donate solely to, 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 to me or Lorenzo, uh, we have accounts for that. There's, the donations that go through this channel go to Nick. So just a reminder to everyone. But again, thank you for the donations. Understandable, mate. And mate, thank you for um, for being a legend, mate. Thank you for being a legend. All right. right. All, right. All right. Back into the swing of things. We're going to get your opinion on this, mate. Were the West Tigers robbed? And look. People are going to call us biased because you're a Tigers fan. I'm a Cowboys fan. But I have a strong opinion on this. Were the Tigers robbed, mate? Look, it, it's clear as day a robbery. I, I don't know I don't know what game Ashley Klein was watching up there or, or if if he you know, went through the rule book any time. You don't even need a rule book to go through this, all right? The, 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 you watch that over and over again. Kapoa had eyes for solely just for the ball. And then people say, oh, he changed his direction to to, to, to block felt of an opportunity of, of tackling. No, he wasn't. The reason why he shifted his body was to get him get it in a position so if Dane Lurie did drop the ball or he did bounce, he'd be in a good position to, to catch the ball. He 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 had eyes on the ball, had no idea where, where Felt was going, and felt the Hollywood actor comes running in and he picked the Tigers player. He picked he he was looking, he's like, all right, I'm gonna take a dive. Which one's gonna look believable? Oh, Kapoa's right there. Boom. Runs straight into Kapoa, does the mother of all dives, and oh, again, and then this is another issue I have. When the referee calls for full, uh, there was no stoppage of play. There was no penalty called, no error, yet the referee still wanted to do a challenge. For what? He didn't stop the game. And if he was to stop the game, it's for full time. You can't go back. So there's so many things in this situation that's wrong. Ashley, uh, Ashley Klein doesn't know what what a um, escort is. Uh, Kapoa did not intentionally escort Kyle Fell. Kyle Fell is nothing more but a Hollywood actor. And um, you can't give a challenge if there's no stoppage of play. And all right, to sum that all up, Tigers got robbed. Now, Nick, okay. Okay. please ex Nick, please explain to me and everyone else how that isn't a robbery. Okay. I understand your point of view. I respect your opinion. Okay. I watched an Arrow 360 the other night. Yes, I watched that garbage show. I did. I did. I listened to Paul Kent's point. I listened to everyone else's. I think James Hooper was on there as well. Here's my argument. This is my case to you, Proenzo Vids, and all that champa. This is my case. Now, obviously, I can't show the footage live on camera because of copyright and all that bullshit. So I'm, I'm watching the clip right now with the volume down all the way so you can't get me for copyright. No one can get me for copyright. Here's what, here's what Here it is. So the kickoff happens. Kapoa's foot is on the sideline. It's between the 40 and the 30-meter line. So Kapoa is already in a pretty vulnerable position. Now, Kyle Fels the first one to sprint after the ball because it's a short kickoff. Now, everybody says Kapoa doesn't change his line. Well, Kyle Fels running through. Kapoa moves from the sideline to a, a good 20 meters in from touch. He is a good – so you know where the 40-meter line is and the 30-meter line is? You know yes. that white line that they have on the yes. line? That straight line that goes across the um, the field? The yes. pole goes from the sideline to the fucking other line. Now, if that isn't changing a line, then I don't know what is. Right. Because you're, what, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I, I've, got to, I've got to get it out there. He stands between the 40 and the 30-meter line on the sideline. 
He ends up right next to the 30 metre line where the number is. So how can anyone say that he didn't change his mind? Because if you go back and watch Kyle Felt, Kyle Felt is running for the ball. Kyle Felt's allowed to run anywhere he can because he's going for the ball. Kapoa can't go from the, from the sideline all the way where Kyle Felt is in front of him. Kyle Felt, yeah, he may have ran at him deliberately, took a bit of a dive, but Kapoa did block him off by having his back turned. He can't, oh my go, God. He can't go from the sideline all the way to where that 30 meter line is. He can't do that. That's changing the, the, your line. Yeah, but the reason why he ran from the, the, the position, position he was from the kickoff to where he ended up was to get in a good position if Dan Laurie did knock the ball on, yeah, or but if he, he let can't it bounce go from the sideline all the way to the thirty meter line, bro, well, that, he can do that. He, line. But but he can he he's he's trying to get into position. He can catch the ball. He can go anywhere. He can well, he can be come, anywhere how, on the field. What did he run in for? He didn't need to run in there. The ball was. Well, he didn't he didn't run into to block how Felt. Kyle Felt ran into him because he was milking a penalty. It, there's Every nothing wrong. Every player is going to do that in these situations, but Kapoa but he, what, is in the way. You can't go from the sideline which is between the 30 and 40 meter line end up right next to that 30 meter line where it says 30 on the fucking on the on the on the um on on the pitch you can't but, do but that he, he he did not he did not escort Carl Fell. no way his eyes were he all did. on the ball his eyes was a oh my, oh bro my God. bro if this Jesus was the 25th Christ. minute would you still say robbed yeah well look, i want to say robbed but i'd say it would be a terrible call the reason why it's a robbery is because they won the match of a terrible call. It was Adam Dewey missed two goals in the last five minutes, which one of them would have won the game. Yeah, Kyle Felt got up laughing. He was probably laughing at the replay because he probably thought, oh, I might have got away with a, with a milk there. But the letter of the law is you can't change your line, and that's a penalty. But he he didn't change his line to escort Kyle Felt. He got himself in a position where he could catch the ball if something went wrong. Yeah, right. Bro, your, your other argument was that the Cowboys weren't allowed to challenge it. Well, I'm not sure if you're aware of this. The touch judge was trying to communicate with the referee on field and say, hang on, don't call game yet. There's, I saw someone get knocked over for the Cowboys. That's what yeah. the touch judge saw. Yeah, the touch but he judge did... the referee. That's why the challenge was that's... allowed because there was a stoppage but, of play. But, but that's not a, that is not a stoppage of play. The referees yeah. can't do that. If, you know, if, if there's only that. a penalty or an error – cannot call a challenge there was no penalty called what's there to there challenge a if there was no call bro what's that bro the touch judge said to the referee you need to stop there's something going on here Kyle Phelps been knocked over but we need to look at it that's why the Cowboys challenge was allowed it's full it fucking stopping. time it's full time you yeah, can't oh my god mate you can't go back on a decision when the, the, the time of game is done you can't it was one I, second I'm, left. Oh my god! One second god. is one second, right? Last play of the game. I mean, you go for oh. a fucking hell Mary. No, oh, Nick, you're in La La Land right now, mate. Nah, mate. Nah, <laughs> I'm not the only one that says I'm not the only one. I'm oh yeah, you one. and you and Paul Ken are the only two people I know that nah. actually think this wasn't a robbery. <laughs> Cowboys oh, fans, are, Cowboys fans are very very happy with with the decision. Oh, because you guys won the game. Yeah. You won the game. Yeah. It took him out. It took him out. That's not a, oh, that's and not bro, a that, what's this thing? What's this thing about your disgusting and pathetic club going on about they want the two points reducted to them? I mean, what because is it was a robbery. That it's a robbery. It's it, never it, happened oh. before. Well, I don't know if you remember 2014 round one. Remember when the Dragons tried to do it against Melbourne and they failed? But what, this why? is. This is, I'm going to call it right now, this is the biggest robbery we've seen in a long time because there is no way we could have came back and won the game because the game was over. Hey, hey, hey. You can blame that last call all you want, but when you were up 18-6, why didn't you finish us off there and then? Uh, obviously, you guys came back, but we held on and we came Did back with a late try. We came back with a late try and we won the game. The Tigers won that game. I don't care what the score says. The Tigers won that game. You guys lost to last. And that's going to be in the back of your heads well, for you the rest of the season. Well, you want to talk about being robbed. How do you think I felt for three years of my childhood having to deal with it from 2012, 13, and 14? Well, I don't think I've been dealing for 11 years. The Tigers <laughs> being a shit club and we finally get a good <laughs> win against 
a top two side and it gets taken away from us because of that 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 fucking moron up in the bunker, Ashley Kine. That 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 fucking Futurama idiot. I right, Ashley Kine, if you're watching this, if you're watching this, you fucking receding bowl headed fuck. If you're watching this right now, Ashley Kine, go fuck yourself. Go to the top of the harbor bridge and say, everybody, I fucking eat my own shit. You fucking dumb fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, at the end of the day, I enjoyed that. 20, 27, 26, mate. So good luck next year. I hope you guys choke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Um, all right. uh, I'm gonna ask, I want to ask you one more, one more thing on this, and probably you can have your pull on this as well. Yeah. Is there a rivalry now between the Cowboys and the Tigers because they got history from the 2005 Grand Final? <sighs> Look, I don't consider it a rivalry, but I do consider it a competitive sort of, you know, bad blood match, like that sort of type, you know. Not rivalry, but it's like below itself. What do you reckon, Champa? Do you hate well, the Cowboys' guts now? But it wasn't our <laughs> fault. The referee's fault. Uh, uh, my, bone is, my bone is to pick with the referees more, but uh, this is another thing I'm going to have for the Cowboys now because – now, every time the Cowboys and the Tigers play, the 2005 Grand Final, it's just always something that's always mentioned when we yeah, play. Yeah, I know. And it shits me and, off. Um, yeah. <laughs> and now, you know, you took you took some of our players. You took Ainsley Masters and a Tigers legend and top Payton's coach. You took Lay Little off your eye. How good's that? You, too, uh, you took Lay. Yeah. <laughs> you took that uh, that 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 um that moron Lay Lua. Champa, uh, you know, Champa. I'm 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 gonna piss you off when I say this. Todd Payton is on the cusp of. Having a better career as a coach at the Cowboys than when he was playing at the Tigers. Oh, stop him. Nah, you're telling Porkers, <laughs> mate. <laughs> you, talk, yeah. you gotta stop him. Hey, he's only had one year. One two years actually. One was a failure, and this season's actually looking all right. So <laughs> you know. Oh. Uh, you know what? A a could start a rivalry. If if the if the next match they have is as intense as this. Oh, uh, this could this could be a rivalry. This could be a rivalry. I think there's already a, a, a rivalry building here, but I just got to say as well, the Tigers fans that took it on the chin, because trust me, there were a few good Tigers fans out there that actually took it on the chin. There were a couple of them that got the shits and were really upset. But here's the thing: everybody needs to stop blaming the Cowboys. It's not the Cowboys' fault. It's the bunker that made the decision. It's not. It's, don't blame the fans. Say, oh, I hope the Cowboys lose this week now. It's not the Cowboys' fucking fault. It's the referee. Ashley Klein's been, 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 been stood down. So, oh. don't be blaming us. It's not our fault. Yeah, uh, he should be stood down for the rest of this. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Ashley Klein, he cost me running down the street, fucking screaming, all right, I go for the Cowboys, all right? <laughs> no, he, he, yeah, he cost that. me that. Uh, oh, oh, man. oh, mate. That was fucking funny. All right, we're going to move on now. Topic number four. Oh, I guess it's a more controversial. Probably is going to have a big, a big take Here on this go. one. This is worse. Oh, Topic number four. Seven Manly players have stood down for this week's game because they will not wear the Manly Pride jersey. Wow. Yep. Rowan Zovic, right. there's seven players that are not playing this weekend. I will go through the list. I'm sure everybody already knows it, but I'm going to go through the list anyway. So the players that are not playing this weekend due to um, religious beliefs and they have their own their own view on the Pride jersey is Koala, Sipley, Josh Schuster, Josh Alloway, Jason Saab, Christian Tupilotu, and Hamoli Oakawatu. Um, there's a lot of players not playing this weekend due to that whole situation with the... Um, you know, the gay f- jersey, whatever you want to call it. Pro Enzo Vids, you're a Manly fan. Do you support the decision of the Manly players not playing or do you think they should harden up and just wear the gay jersey? Um, no, all seven Manly players I support, I think they are entitled to their beliefs and their um, thoughts on the, the gay jersey and everything. I, I can't blame them at all. I think... I think for anyone that's sort of taking aim at them for what they believe in is, is really wrong because, you know, people are already saying that, you know, you know, the people are already upset that people are taking aim at the Manly Pride jersey and, and being all sort of, um, you know, I don't know, rude and stuff like that about it. But it's kind of worse if you take aim at religion now for everything, saying that 
you know, we don't need religion in our game because it causes too much drama and all that. But it's, it, you know, it's, it's to do with the pride jersey. Religion, you know, there's, there's a place for them both. Like, there's, there's a place for them both. Not, you, know, you don't, you know, need to sort of bring that up even more. But the main thing is, right, I, I do think that the jersey should have never been made in the first place. That's what I don't understand. How come out of all 16 clubs, we were the only ones to accept a pride jersey? Because I, I believe that the NRL... Or whoever it was offered each club a, jer- a prize jersey for women in the league, which makes zero, just absolutely no sense. I know it's to promote um, inclusiveness and um, and all that, and just to support those people who I guess struggle to express their sexuality. But still, I, I just don't think it's right for the the main sort of theme it was, which was women in the league. Mm. That's what that's what it should have been the whole time. That's where I think it should have been more promoted, uh, not gay pride, whatever it is. Now, I'll be honest with everyone that's watching right now. I am not a fan of gays. I've never liked them. I think they're 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 things, and you know, they're, they're, they should just stay out of the game. I really, I really think that all that sort of stuff, politics, 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 should stay out of the game because it doesn't mix well with the sport. Um, and you know, like I've said, you know, it's making too many people upset bringing this sort of stuff into the game as well. It is. Play, pl- players are going to be divided now. I mean, I hope not with the squad, but. Over this opinion of you know the prizes and everything, there will be divided opinions, and it's just a messy situation. And um, you know, I, I also just want to say that you know, for anyone that's saying that, oh look, if anyone's been called a homophobe for not agreeing with the, the pride jersey, then you're a fucking idiot because you can't call someone a homophobe for just a disagreeing with something. Like, yeah, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Everyone's allowed a free free word and a choice of what they believe. You know, you can't just call the seven million players homophobes for not wearing the jersey and a bit of rainbow on it. That's their that's their religious beliefs. That's what they believe at the end of the day, just like everyone else. We all have an opinion. That's what and you can't you can't please everyone unfortunately. Not everyone's gonna agree with this exact same thing. Everyone's gonna have different sort of thoughts on it, and that's the that's the main thing. So um fair enough. You know, that you know, that's what I really think. I wanna take the time to say thank you to the Manly Seagulls for taking the news. This week, it was all negative about us, and now Manly have just decided to say, oh, no, yeah. fuck the robbery. We'll just talk about this jersey. And, uh, look, oh, jeez. We, we do need to be careful what we say here because we don't want um, a bunch of, you know, people who agree with the um, the jersey being beautiful, but we don't want them to come on here and get yeah. upset too much. So we've got to be really careful with what we say here. Yeah. Um Here's the thing. So, I'm not religious. I'm not gay. Personally, I don't have a problem with the Manly players stepping down this weekend. Seven players have stood down because they don't want to wear the pride jersey. I have no problem with it. They have their own religious beliefs. They're allowed to have their own opinion. And I have no issue with it whatsoever. What I have an issue with, boys, is... Why are the pride jerseys even being brought into the game itself? Exactly. Why? Yeah. Why? Why do we need to bring them involved? They, we <sighs> don't have a gay competition. We don't have a, a sex a, a sex competition where it's just gay people only. We don't have that. We don't have a LBG to tell you whatever the fuck it's called community competition. Why are we talking about pride jerseys? Why has that even been involved? What's the go there? I'd love to know the reason. I don't understand it. People talk about equality rights. Fair enough. Everybody is allowed to have their own opinion and everyone's allowed whatever they want. But to bring in this gay stuff where the, the people that are gay, it's just it's interfering with the game. You're bringing politics into the rugby league, which I'm not a fan of itself. And... I don't want to be rude. Like, I really don't. That jersey that Manly are wearing tomorrow night might be one of the worst jerseys I've ever seen in my life. I agree. <laughs> it is fucking shit. I agree. Bro, <laughs> I can't even hear right now. You've got that noise on in the background. I don't know what it is. Now, let me just say this. I'm going to say this once, and I really want everybody to listen to this. The NRL will not have the balls to bring in a pride. It's been talk on the news and on the radio 
NRL may bring in a gay pride, pride round next year. Trust me, they won't have the balls to do it now because look at the backlash that's caused Manly. Seven players are out. If they do that for the whole competition, we're going to have over 100 players not playing one weekend of football. So it'd be bad enough to, bad enough with what's happened at Manly this week. It'd be bad. It'd be terrible to bring it in in general. So like I said before, we don't have any gay competitions. We don't have any pride competitions. We don't need a pride jersey in the game. It's not needed, not necessary. Champa, what's your opinion on it all? Right. Um, I'm not as religious as I once was, though I am a believer of God, and I am a believer of I do not agree with homosexuality. I am not a I, – I don't have a problem with the people. I just don't agree with their choices. And I definitely do not agree that LGBT um, X or whatever it is and rugby league, they should not be in the same conversation because rugby league, it's a sport, all right? It's not a social or anything. It's not, it's not politics or anything. It's a sport, purely for sport. Yeah. We bring politics, we bring religion, we bring all this stuff into it. It ruins the game. Look for this. It ruined the Manly singles, all right? This is a game that they, they really needed to win to fight for the eight against a top team like the Roosters. Now seven of their players are not playing because Manly wanted to be different and bring out this jersey that doesn't even represent the round that they're um, celebrating, which is women's in leagues, all right? And I firstly want to say, I, can, I, I, I if I could shake those seven players' hands, I would because the amount of guts... And the, the amount of of balls it would have taken those players to do what they did, to stand up for who they are, knowing the backlash, knowing the hate, and everything that would they would have gotten, to still go through all that and say, you know what, I'm standing true to what I am. I'm going to stand true to my heart and my religion and my culture and my family and not play this weekend because I'm not going to wear that jersey. I commemorate that. All right, they showed their dignity, and I think it's fucking amazing. All right, yeah. as for the well Manly Seagulls, as for the Manly Seagulls, well, they should have managed this a whole lot better, and they could have started yeah. by consulting the players first. All right, three days before the game happens, and they find out they're going to wear these jerseys. Des, Des probably had a team list ready to put in on Tuesday, and he had to fucking make all these changes because of this. It's yeah. ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous, and to. So all those people out there calling calling every calling those seven players homophobes, yeah, gay fuck. bashers, bigots. That and annoys I, I, me, bro. I, look, all right. Stupid. Just because we have our own opinions doesn't make doesn't mean we we, we are homophobes or anything. Get this: if the roles were reverse, all right. If the roles were reverse, and 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 we had a team full of gay people, and they had to represent a, a a jersey that represents Jesus or the Bible, and they turned on that jersey saying we're not wearing that, they will be commemorated for what they did. However, when right. the tables are turned, when they turned, and um, plays want to do uh, what they believe in and not represent it, apparently they're homophobes, they hate gay people, and all that stuff. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that is hypocritical, and that. It does not belong in our game. The rugby, rugby league did not need that. And look, it's, it's just causing so much confusion because this is they're not going to shake this off for a while. This is this is going to stay with them for a long time. And it's going to stay with Manly for a long time. And it's going to stay with the NRL for a long time. So thank it would have helped if these jerseys were never in the first place. Yeah, thank you, Champa, for that. Thank you, mate. Um, I want to go to the live chat real quick. we got another $10 donation here from Mr. Lachlan. Everybody... If you can please sign out to Pro Enzo Vids, Nick and Lachlan, they are great people. I donate to them every week. So here's 10, boys. Enjoy it and spend it on something nice for yourselves. Thank you, Mr. Lachlan. And I did see you at the free dolls before. Um, thank you very much, my friend. It means a lot to me, my man. Um, yeah, look, it's, it's controversial, this whole situation. But the last thing I'm going to say, because we need to move on real quick. What did you make of the comments from former Manly player Ian Roberts? What did you make of what he said? You know, um, I, don't want to sound, I don't want to sound rude, but I think what he says is pretty irrelevant, in my opinion. I think at the end of the day, the players stick to what they believe, and you know, he, he just going going off of his opinion. You know, you can't, like I said, you can't please everyone or what they believe in, what they do. You know, we all have different mindsets and everything. So, 
I appreciate him trying to do something, but he's not what is needed at the moment. Mm, okay. Well, Champa, have you heard what Ian Roberts said? Uh, I did. Um, <clears throat> look, um, I, I agree with what he said that he, he – if he because he said he wanted to at least talk to the players first before the jersey presented. I, I do agree with that. However, you know, him pushing for a pride round or a pride celebration in rugby league, it's well, never well. going to happen. And he should just, in, in all respect, Ian Roberts, you should just, just, just stop going for that. Because look at look at what look look what it's caused for one team. You add well, now seventeen teams, it's just going to cause a whole lot of trauma. So, look, I respect what he said, but mm, no. all I'm going to say on it, bro. All I'm going to say on it, he is obviously gay. He's going to have his own opinion, and look, obviously, he's going to push for the jerseys and the pride round, but. At the end of the day, I don't think anybody wants it. And from what I understand, Manly were only able to sell 50 pride jerseys. That's it. That's fuck all. Fuck yeah, no. yeah, exactly. That's fuck all. Anyway, we'll move on from this topic because we all, we know how touchy it is. Yeah, let's get back to rugby league. Topic number three, more controversy. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin Proctor sacked for vaping. Now, obviously, Proctor didn't play on the weekend. He was on the sideline. At the Dogs Titans game, and he, at half time, he walked into the, the to the toilets or something, and he was vaping. And he put it on his Instagram story, and he's now been sacked from it. I mean, fuck, boys. Wow. What, are you, what are your thoughts on this? Uh look. Um. Okay, he's a rugby league player, and it's not the best image when uh, a rugby league player, especially with someone with a lot of reputation like Kevin Proctor, is seen vaping mid game. Um, it is a bad look. However, sacking him, oh, that's a oh, – look, you guys might disagree, but I think that's an overreaction from the Titans. Fuck it, I think it's an overreaction. Oh, if, it say... was AJ, if it was AJ Brimson, <laughs> if it was David Fafita or Tino Fasul Malawi, they wouldn't have been sacked. Fuck no. You can't tell me they would have been sacked. It's it's ridiculous. Oh, man. Uh, uh at the, the least he he should have copped a fine at least a, a two five grand fine that would be that a would fine, be yeah. more five thousand dollar yeah. fine and maybe a two week suspension but because he's on the way out he's probably not gonna he wasn't gonna be there next year anyway that's like oh yeah yeah we fought this up. it's a bullshit excuse to get rid of someone what about right. last year when Munster and Brendan Smith and Race Walsh were all doing illegal yeah stuff? they didn't get the sack but the Gold Coast what for vaping bro. How many of the Titans players go out after a game to a nightclub at Seven's Paradise and vape? I reckon the majority of them probably do. Uh, I reckon a lot of them do. I reckon a lot of other players in the NRL do that as well. But just this because this one... Yeah. Look, I, look, I get it. Vaping is a bad image. And yes, I understand it's not good. But you cannot... This is his job. Okay, even though he's leaving the club next year, this is still his livelihood. This so is where he up. earns money. Up. If you're at work... And you went for a five minute break and you were vaping, and we got the sack for it, you'd, you'd lose your mind. I fucking lose my mind. I walk into my boss's office and be like, Are you serious? I, I, you're going to sack me for my job, my livelihood, over a 30 second little or whatever. Just come fucking on. Ridiculous. There's nothing in it. Oh, Pro, oh, what do you reckon goodness. about this? Look, the reason why he got sacked was because the, the ground combat stadium does not comply any vaping and so was the NRL. That's the reason why he got sacked for anyone I'm wondering. Is it an overreaction? You can yep. say that. You can because players do it on their stories all the time. But the only difference is he's doing it while representing the club. And, and well, then it should be a suspension, not a not, not, not match. Not that, that's it why, that's a why he's doing so, it. So, so um, do, yeah. do, do, do you agree with the sacking? Yeah, I do. Wow. Oh, why not? Oh, my God. Why, why not? Hey. Why not? Oh, you cannot be serious thing. right now. He, that... why, why did he have to vape in the first place? You, but it's, it's, a, it's a small thing. To... You can't lose a job but for that. He's playing a match, mate. He's playing a match. Yeah, playing I understand he's playing a like match. Yeah, there, there are other forms of punishment that would have been more reasonable. He wasn't even playing, though. He was getting like, fired. He wasn't even, he wasn't even in 7-8. It... Still, still, who does that? Uh, no one brings a substance. Uh, I mean, if you're watching the Titans play, who the fuck wouldn't want to vape but half time? That's fucking shit. <laughs> oh. But still, you should have never had him the first place. Yeah, oh, like, that, nah, I, that is an overreaction. Friendship pro Enzo was more worthy than, us, than getting fired. 
I mean, you can say that, but look, I just believe the sack was fair. That's that's where oh, I stand. Come there. on, man. Right, I think. Like, 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 I think. All right, uh, Prime. I want to ask you this one: If that was Brimson, Tino for Fader, do they get the sack? Yeah, of course, because no way, like, no, no, you can't convince. It doesn't me. matter. It doesn't matter how good the player is. Oh my god! Because that's that's the rules of the stadium. That's the rules of the stadium. That's the rules of the NRL. But you know, it applies, it applies to everyone. What, what's, wrong what's wrong with that? What's wrong with someone? If it was Brimson, ten out of huh? that's no way they're getting the sack. No way. No why not? Way. Why not? No way they'd sack them. They'd probably suspend them and fine them. There's no way they'd oh. fine. Why? Why not though? You, they, you it, can't. It, it, no, I wouldn't. To Proctor? But what makes fight, it so different to Proctor? Proctor's an old kind about to retire, and he's not even going to be there. Doesn't matter. They're all, they're all players. Doesn't matter. I wouldn't. No, he wouldn't but have got sacked. You can't fire someone over vaping. <laughs> Come on. Well, it happened. You must have jumped. I can't believe what happened. You can't, can't change it now. What happened? What, happened. what are you going to do? You can't change it now. That's what. Uh, Gold Coast. Fuck, they're crazy. Um, Mr. Lockwood. Jesus Pro Christ. Enzo, bring it on bring it on tomorrow. We're gonna to beat you. Oh. Well, I mean you're a Rooster supporter. I mean I can't disagree. I tip Roosters, so Ooh. <laughs> Nick, we play in <laughs> round twenty two and twenty wait, what? Ah uh, We play the Bulldogs and the Roosters. Wait, what? The Ro- okay, he goes for the Roosters. So he plays you guys in round twenty two and then plays us in twenty three. Oh, I'm yeah, sure that's what it means. Oh, you know that properly, yeah. me. All right. Well, Kevin Proctor's been sucked. Me and Proenzo and have a different, a different a, a, um, opinion on it. But uh, so does Tampa. But bugger me, Proctor's there gone. So who knows where he oh. goes? All right, topic number oh. two. Oh my god, Dale it pissed me off. Oh. Dale Finucane suspended for two weeks <laughs> for a fucking accident. You've got to be Mate, fucking the, kidding me. These judiciary. This might be these judiciary one of the I worst suspensions I have ever fucking seen. I cannot believe oh, Fanukin got suspended for a fucking accident. He didn't even hit Crotton in the head. <laughs> it was a fucking head clash in the in the ear. What an absolute disgrace. This makes me si- physically sick to my stomach. Pro and Zovid, what are your thoughts on this suspension? I honestly feel sick talking about it. Oh, it's not a suspension, that's for sure. I mean, we see this every week, but I think that it's an over-exaggeration because only because he busted the Stephen Crichton D. That's why they're you know, all going on about it, saying it looks so bad and everything. That's the only reason why, because there was a serious injury at the, at the end of it. But we see it every week, don't we? We see it every week, head clashes. What can I actually do it? So I think the suspension is not fair. And I really think that Fukin should be playing this weekend against Souths. And um, no, nah, it's not. It's not right. You should really. I think the NRL and the game need to really just. They really just need to see the consistency and what is a, a dangerous tackle or a head clash, or whatever, because it's not a suspension. Mate, I understand why Penrith would be mad because it happened to Stephen Crichton, and he's one of their most important players, especially in their outside backs. But um, it was unfortunate what happened to Crichton's ear, but you can't tell me if Finucane deliberately did that. He didn't even yeah. make contact with his head. He hit him mm. in the ear off, his, off the ball. It's a head clash, if anything. You're going to get suspended for a head clash now. I mean, fuck me. What is this? Touch football? <laughs> it's fucking Camp, soft, man. What's your take Wait. on it, mate? Oh God! These these NRL judiciary referees are oh, they're having a shocker. They had a shocker this weekend. God fuck me, dead. Like, right, let me get this right. This whole rule about head contact are, are are you know are going to be looked at quite well. Okay, I'm all in for 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 the crackdown on on head contact. But you gotta un- you gotta understand to yourselves on, on what. Is a dangerous tackle. He didn't even get penalized for it, and now he's no, getting he suspended. I did. There we go. I'm, I'm just watching the footage once again. I'm just watching it. Here we go. So Crichton's going for a run up. It's at, at the time of the game, Penrith 14 10, nine minutes to go. Fanukin's trying to inspire his teammates, put on a big hit, obviously a legal hit, and just trying to get some momentum for the Sharks. Here we go. Fanukin goes up. 
Fanukin's arm and shoulder hits the ball and then it bounces off and it gets Crichton in the ear. But they just... call it what the NRL judiciary called they called it careless and reckless oh, and dangerous. Stop I mean, it. Give me a break. What is this? Tuck football? It it shows how these rules have made our game so soft and almost unwatchable. You Seriously. can't tell me that's worth two weeks on the sideline. That's not. It's a head clash. What's he supposed to do? What he just he just he intensely went up to Steve McQuarrie and just mm, hit him. In, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. He he accidentally hit him in the head, and oh god, I, it's pretty uh, suspension. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. He, One of the uh, worst. I want to. I want to know. I want to ask these judiciary people. Look at that tackle, and you tell me what's illegal in that tackle. And if you can convince me, like, because there's no way that you can convince me that's an illegal tackle. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. I couldn't oh, believe in the eyes. I still can't believe he got that long for it. Crazy. Absolutely oh, I, crazy. I just, uh, it shows how far our game was 10 years I think ago. When what we need like to that. say, Champa, I think what needs to happen. There needs to be a review on the NRL judiciary. Oh, there has to be. Their, their judiciary, their refs, the people in the bunkers, they need to be a whole heap of review into this. And like I, I was just saying, it shows how far our game has gone when 10 years ago that would have been probably one of the, the, the hits of the round. It would have been praised. It would have been, it, it would have been you know, commemorated. Now it's, it's, it, it warrants your suspension, so... Ah, uh, that. Oh, that's just it's fucked. You know what? Let's move on. <laughs> fuck, fuck that yeah. bullshit suspension, man. Topic number one. Well, we all know how desperate the Melbourne Storm are. They've been looking for outside backs for a couple of weeks. They've had injury after injury. They have ended up stealing David Nofaluma from the West Tigers on a loan deal fuck. for the rest of 2022. The first thing I'm going to ask: Why on earth would the Tigers? Let go of their best outside back. Because we're, because we're because we're idiots. Because we're idiots. That, that's what that's what it is. Hikers. All right. All right so, okay. Uh, all right, I just all right. All right. Well, at, at least this shows that Melbourne has no depth or juniors. <laughs> they, they, they can't come. breed anyone good. But um, look, this is going to be a good experience for for David Orfaluma to play in the finals team because I don't think he's ever played finals footy before. So. This would be good for him to be in a system that's uh, very strict and and very well organized because he, he's a player that deserves it. But man, who in management does actually agreed on letting David Norfolk go? Because oh God, I just Crazy, bro. he's been he's been one of our best outside backs for years, and we're trying to avoid the spoon. We're still fighting for something. All right, our seeds is not over. All right, I'm not not to make the eight, but to save our reputation and not get the spoon. We're fighting for the spoon. We need our best players. So, whoever agreed with this, and uh, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's absolutely fucking ridiculous. I know it's a line deal, bro, but uh, you're, you're trying to avoid the wooden spoon, but you let go of your best winger. It's ridiculous. Exactly. Exactly. Like, yeah, he's going to come back with the experience. He's going to come back with the uh, ma maybe even the Melbourne mentality. But come on, man. Uh, look, I don't care if he doesn't come back with anything like that. We need him this time. We need to avoid the spoon. So we need our best players. That's exactly right. <sighs> uh, Proenzo, do, do you like the addition of not for to Melbourne for the rest of the year? Well, I made a video about this not long ago, actually, and um, I think it's a good pickup. I think Nofaluma is a quality outside back who's been around for a good nine years, nearly ten years, and I think he's been a very consistent player for the Tigers, and he has stood by them through all the things they've gone through and all the, you know, the unsuccess they've gone through. So I think it's a good pickup by Melbourne, and you know, I, I just want to say that, like, you know, he he thrived 
with some all this year in a different system, imagine what he could be like in a Melbourne system. Maybe being away from the Tigers mm. system would benefit his game, and you know, maybe actually show the potential he has as a player outside of Tigers. That that's I, what I think. As well. I don't want to be rude, but if I was not for him, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even go back to the Tigers. Fuck that. <laughs> oh God. Well, oh man. They, they, they dropped him up one game as well, so you know, I, I don't think that he's in their plans. Good addition, and he will play for finals this year if Melbourne hold on to the top eight. If that is. If they hold on, they're not locked in yet. I don't see them missing the eight. But um, if 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 David North Limit does excel as a if he does like say uh, break out in Melbourne and has like a, an amazing uh, remainder of the season, would you probably see other clubs maybe want to having a go at David North Luna and signing him? Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I'm afraid that could happen. Quality yeah, player, bro. He's a good player. Quality player. All right. Well, good work for, um, from Melbourne for getting someone. They needed someone on the wing. for. Um, I believe he'll debut next week as well, so that should be good. Yeah, that should yeah. be all right. So we'll see how he goes. But now it's time <laughs> for the Breakdown <laughs> Podcast Game Show. Colby. Oh. oh, stop it, mate. <laughs> stop it. Uh, one sec. All our champion, Nick from the show. Here's another $5. You two are the nicest YouTubers. You deserve it. Go to the Roosters, 2022. What about Pro Inter? Bust- I'm nice. What? Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm a fun mate, it, how much is he done is, out of tonight? Is, me, he's done well. He's like close to 40, I think, man. It must be payday for him. <laughs> oh, I've got no idea. I mean, it was payday for me today, so bugger me. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we're going to do this game show. Now, basically, we all know how it works. Best First one to get three, three correct wins. Anybody gives away the answers in the chat, you'll be banned for a good five minutes. All right. Let's now, talk, the odds for the match... Pro Enzo Vids is a dollar thirty, and All Out Champa is three dollars thirty. What? Yeah, that's oh that's fair All right. Good, good, good thinking bookies. Oh man, the get people, get on me, people, guys. The people at Nick Bet know what they're talking about. I, I agree. Oh god, they're just as delusional as Tom Waterhouse. <laughs> ah, Tom Waterhouse. Tom Waterhouse. <laughs> All right, here we go, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. First one to get free is the winner. Pro Enzo and Champa, are you ready? Yes. All right. I'm ready. Yep. Question number one. Next week in the NRL, round 22, what is the Thursday night game? Um, me, um, no, hang on. Um, Wait, fuck. round 21 uh, next week, isn't it? It's, it's round 21. Do you mean that? No, 22 next week. Oh, oh yeah. no. Two weeks, sorry. Two weeks away, yep. Oh, um... Who is it? Roosters? Roosters? No, it's Penrith and someone. Uh, Rabbitohs. No, Champa? Penrith Raiders? No. Storm. Correct. Yes. Ah! Good start. Oh, All right, good start, good start, good start. Really good start. Really good start there for Mr. Pro Enzo Vids. Not bad. That was a fluke. Ah, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not a fluke, mate. <laughs> oh, jeez. Right. Next question. Who is wearing jersey number 15 on the bench for the Dragons this weekend? Ah. Uh, uh, Michael Mollo? Wrong. Champa. Ah. Uh, Jo Josh Kerr? Wrong. Like, fuck, fuck. No. Josh McGuire? Wrong. Black Lorry? Wrong. Fuck him. Uh Tarek Sims. Wrong. Champa. Damn. Ah. Uh... Fuck Champa. Billy Burns? Aaron Wrong. Woods. Correct, Aaron Woods. Hey. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, that was a fluke. But anyway, one all, one one. Yes. yes. 
Yes. One all. Wow. One all. Right. All right. Let's, let's go from Good question. Go. Hey, that was a good one. All right. Fellas. I would see. Who is wearing jersey number 14 for the Bulldogs this week? Oh, uh, um, uh, it's like Booker Clay, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, I know. Oh, fuck off. Zach Dr. Clay, yes it is. Yeah. Good job. Two one. One more left for for uh, Pro Enzo. Not oh, happening. Not happening. Oh, Not happening. All right. Lots nah, of pressure. No. Nah. Last question. Who is wearing jersey number fifteen for the Raiders this weekend? Uh, Corey Harry Wanara? Wrong. Fuck. Um, Hudson Young? Wrong. No, it wouldn't be Hudson Young. Ryan Sutton? Correct. No. Yeah. It was happening. It was happening. Sorry. 3 1. I just, Three, I just, one. Gotta, I just, gotta, I just gotta get something. Oh, I'll give you a thumbs up. Thumbs up, Jake's wig style. Oh, well done. Well. Provenzo Vid wins it 3 1. But congratulations. Uh, good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Lovely week. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry to all my friends. I'm sorry to all my fans that I've let you all down. <laughs> the bookies are smart today. All right. Well, let's get uh, into the round of footy, shall we, fellas? Round 20 of the NRL. It kicks off tomorrow night, mate, for women in league round. It's the Manly Seagulls and the Sydney Roosters from Brookvale Oval. Um. I want to know, boys, who wins? Give me a 1 to 12 or 13 plus and just give me a try scorer. Pro Enzo Vids. I'm mainly going to win. I'd love to say yes, but I don't think so. I think Roosters win by 20 points. Um, and my first try scorer is going to be Joseph Marnie. Pro Enzo, uh, all out Champa? Uh, yeah, Roosters 13 plus. And um, first, uh, anytime try scorer, I'm going to go to the man on debut. Uh, he has a good story behind him. Pecky Sayer, I think his name is. Oh, Pio Secchi, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pecky. I'm going to go the Sydney Roosters 13 plus, but I reckon James Seguiaro will score off the bench. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's, a good that's good. That's good. That's good. Mainly debut. I like Seguiaro to score, but the Roosters will be far too good. Um. All right, next game, Friday night, 6 o'clock over there in New Zealand, Mount Smart Stadium, Warriors Storm Pro Enzo. Um, I'll go Storm after 12 and uh, first try score Jerome Hughes. Nice, nice. Champa? Yeah, I got Storm on 12 and my only time at try scorer is going to be Marcelo Montoya. I'm going the Warriors 1 to 12. <laughs> oh, the Smokey. That's the Warriors the are my specials of the weekend. They the will win. Yes, the Warriors are going to win. I'm going to go the Warriors by eight, so one to twelve, and I reckon I reckon um, Wade Egan will score the first try. A win for Warriors in our real phonetics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Warriors in our real phonetics. <laughs> Back today with another video. Oh, we love you, doesn't, phonetics. Doesn't get old. Doesn't get old. We love you, uh, phonetics. The other game, the other game Friday night, Parramatta against Penrith out at Combank Stadium. Uh, this should be interesting. Can Parramatta do the double over, over over the Panthers this year? I think Penrith will be a bit too strong, unfortunately. I've got Penrith by 14 points, 13 plus, and uh, my anytime try scorer is going to be Sean O'Sullivan. Mm, nice. Champa? Yeah, I agree. Penrith is just going to be a bit too strong. I'm going for a 1 to 12 win, and my anytime try scorer is going to be for that big monster kick out. I'm going Penrith. I'm going the Riff 1 to 12. And Brian To'o will score a try at some point. To'o. Brian To'o in the corner. <laughs> you know why he's going to score in the corner? Why? Because he's Brian To'o. To'o. <laughs> uh, Super Saturday. 3 p.m. up at the Gold Coast there. Yeah? City Bar Super Stadium. The Gold Coast Titans and the Kambara Raiders. What happens here? Ooh. I think I think Canberra... Uh, it will be a bit too strong, I think. And uh, I'll go them 1-12. to 12. And um, I reckon Jamal Fogarty's going to score his former club. I really Ooh, think Jamal Fogarty Cup. 
Wow. That's it. Snapper. Yeah, I'm going to go for the Canberra Raiders 13 plus. And I reckon an anytime try scorer is going to be that Bart Simpson moron, Tino Fasul Malawi. Oh, yuck. That'll yuck. be a bad, bad taste on everyone's lunch. That happens. <laughs> I'm also going to go with the Canberra Raiders. I'm going to go Canberra 29 plus. I'm with you. I reckon Jamal Fogarty will score. But I'm also going to throw in, uh, throw in sexy Xavier Savage. Nice. He's a savage. Yeah. He's a what a savage. Man. He would be a bloke that I reckon would – he would make you a good sandwich, a bloke. I love him. <laughs> what? I love I it. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just talking heaps of shit. Um, <laughs> Saturday, 5.30 at Shark Park. It is Cronulla Sutherland against South Sydney. This is the game of the round. 3v6. This should be a cracker. Cronulla and South, boys. What happens here? I think Sharks will get them at home. Sharks never lose at home. And I'm going to go anytime try scorer, Connor Tracy. Champa? I reckon the Sharks may be a bit too good. Uh, Sharks 1 to 12. And my anytime try scorer is going to be Ronaldo Molotalo. Ronaldo! Ronaldo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go Cronulla one to twelve, and I'm gonna go that big, big, beautiful monster. He looks like Mark Henry, big seer for Talakai. <laughs> he will score. Jed Cartwright's gonna get drilled in, onto a treadmill. Talakai oh, will score. It's a big job. Big Talakai job, right there. Sharks to win. Um. Saturday night, 7.35 p.m. at Suncorp Stadium. I will be there. I will be at this game. It's the Broncos and the Tigers. I'll be at this game Saturday night. Who wins, boys? Um, I Look, Brisbane should be a bit too good. Uh, I'll go Brisbane 13 plus. And I'm going to go the guy on day, Dean Marin at the centre. I think he's nice. I think he's Champa, Tigers uh, go what? Yeah, I reckon the West Tigers is just way too good for this match. It could be probably the performance of a lifetime. I think they've got to put on. So I reckon West Tigers by 13 plus. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I reckon any time Tribe scorer is going to be that beautiful, sexy, sexy man, Dane Laurie. Josh, if you can hear me, go to the Tigers. He's not even in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go the Broncos by 19 points. I reckon it'll be a late field goal. Bronx Bronx by 19. And I'm going to go with that beautiful winger, Corey Oates, to score. Oh, nice. The red right, Sunday, 2 o'clock at Newcastle. Knights and the Dogs. Uh, dogs should be a bit too strong. But the way they're going, I trust them a bit more. So... Dogs 1 to 12, and um, I think any time try scorer is going to be Michael King, actually, in dummy half. Nice. Champa. I reckon Knights 1 to 12. Ooh. Smoke of the round. And I reckon my any time try scorer is going to be that sexy beast, Jacob Sayafiti. Okay. I'm going the Dogs by 12, and the Fox will score. The Fox. Love it. And the final game, Sunday Arvo, 4 o'clock at Cogger Oval. The Dragons and the Cowboys, me oh. versus Brad. This should be good. Dragons playing for their season pretty much. Cowboys playing for top two. This should be a good game. I reckon it's yeah, going to be great. Cowboys win. Cowboys win by the 12. Uh, no, it's Cowboys 30 plus, I mean. And uh, oh. they'll host for a try. Okay, I like it. Champa? Yeah, I reckon, I reckon Cowboys 13 plus, just a bit too strong. And I reckon that Suli, that Moses Suli, will score a try. Is that for the year? Oh, is it? How did I forget that? Um, Jack Bird and Lomax are the centers. You know what? I'm going to shift over to the Cowboys side and I'm going to say Deedon. Back to back games. I'm going to go the Cowboys 1 to 12. This will be tighter than you think. And for a try scorer, Reese Robson. He loves a try against the Dragons. Ooh, that's a good one. Good I one. like that. For a club, for a club. All right. Well, there's the tips for the round of footy. Boys, that's going to conclude the podcast. What a great show it's been. Ah, uh, yeah, it's awesome. been a great show. 
Oh, uh, just hit the hour mark as well. How good is that? Mate, we've had a lot of different opinions and different debates. It's been a great show. Pro Enzo and Champa, thank you for a good night. No, no worries. It was great to be on again. Yeah, great thanks time. for having us on, Nick. You know, the energy in this podcast, and this could be one of our best podcasts we've done. All right. Thanks to everyone for watching, man. All thanks right. everyone. Without, yeah, exactly right. Thanks yeah. everyone that tuned in. Um, if you haven't yeah. subscribed to Pro Enzo Vids and all that channel's channel, make sure you do. The link for their channels are in the description below. Anyway, guys, like, subscribe, do all that good shit. And I'll see you guys tomorrow night for the Thursday night football review between the Manly Seagulls and the Sydney Roosters. Anyway, good night, everyone, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.